We followed what God wanted. We asked for his plan. And this is what we got. And we just kept reminding ourselves that God trusted us with this. And he knew we could handle it. And so we were going to. We tried for about three years and had some testing done and we were told that it would be highly unlikely we would ever have children. Everybody asks about it. When you get married, the next question is, when are you gonna have kids? And why aren't you having kids yet? What's wrong? There was a moment in our grieving process that Jay looked at me and said, aren't you tired? Like, aren't you, aren't you just tired? Like, do you wanna move on from this? So we started praying about it and it led me to a friend who had adopted and we had lunch with her one day. We started the adoption process that afternoon. Literally everything went so fast that within about a month's time, um, we were already pretty much connected with, a, with a, a newborn baby boy. What was tricky about it is Eli was born four weeks premature with drug exposure. And so it wasn't gonna be an easy road. It didn't feel perfect. I feel like there's only so many moments in life when you pray for something so specifically and God hands it to you. We told him we would do this and he's trusting us with this one. So we're gonna do it. I resigned from my job. We packed up the car. It was a 16 hour trip that we took to yeah. pick him up. I was nervous about, is he gonna feel like I'm his mom? Is he gonna accept us? Is it gonna be weird? When we got down there, we were fully expecting to literally just be there a couple days, sign the paperwork and bring him home. And that was not the case. They decided that they were gonna have to wean him slowly off uh, the medication that they were giving him to help combat the drug exposure. We were told that it was gonna be weeks and that was heartbreaking ended up driving back we had a blizzard on the way back home then we had to wait and wait and wait uh, which what felt like forever five weeks later we were told we think he's getting close and you might want to come back down so we did when he came home he was only five pounds two ounces so he was tiny so we fed him around the clock and we kind of felt fell into a rhythm as a family this is what we're going to be doing for the foreseeable future and everything's gonna be great. At every checkup with the doctor, it was obvious he wasn't meeting his milestones and we attributed that to um, premature birth and drug exposure. A lot of things that typical kids did, Eli didn't. He needed to be taught how to be a kid. We started first steps and we started doing therapies, but around nine months old, he lost interest in eating. It went from a struggle to like, he's not gonna do it. And it just became really obvious that this wasn't his premature birth or the drug exposure, it was something else. We went down to Riley and they did a gamut of testing. We did swallow studies to try and explain what was going on, why is this happening? And we waited several months for those test results to come back. I had asked the genetic counselor to call me specifically because I thought I would be able to handle the news better. While I'm sitting at my desk, the phone call comes in and the genetic counselor uh, told me that our son has a rare genetic disorder called Angelman syndrome, which is a deletion of genetic code uh, within Eli's makeup. That impacts all of development for most children. It has seizures, a lack of language development, a lack of gross motor development. As a parent, it's the worst news you could get. A lot of things you think of with children that you're gonna do, he, you're just, you're not going to now. Everything changed. And here, we followed what God wanted. We asked for his plan, and this is what we got. And we just kept reminding ourselves that God trusted us with this, and he knew we could handle it. And so we were going to, we were gonna do the best we could, and we were going to give Eli every opportunity. But despite all of that, he is still the happiest little boy who just loves his life. I feel like God for a long time has been putting the right people in play for us. So when our reality hit that this is gonna be hard, God had already built the tribe. I don't think it's a coincidence that I had a degree in special education and experienced teaching for years. I don't think it was a coincidence that our marriage was strong and we had been through some stuff. Um, so that when we had our backs to the wall, we already had a strong faith and we were already good. So about three years ago, uh, we wake up one morning and Angie told me she wasn't feeling great so she decided to take a pregnancy test. And she's showing me the 
test. And I'm just like, you're kidding me. And she's like, Jay, I'm not joking. It's, it's positive. So I got a blood test and the same doctor who told us that it would be unlikely for us to have baby called us back at nine o'clock at night and said, I'm excited to tell you that you were pregnant. I think God knew that Eli needed a brother, and it's awesome to see someone so naturally step in with Eli and not see Eli for what he's not, but for exactly who he is. My favorite thing about Eli is he reminds me to delight in the simplest of things. He reminds me what God wants me to see. To see the color, to feel the breeze, to smell the air. We see a glimpse of right now, and God sees the whole picture. And I feel like there were so many times when we were struggling with things that Eli was going through and how hard it was for us to kind of grieve the loss of what you think should be or what could be. I think God is always saying, just wait, just wait. You've gone through this infertility. You've gone through the heartache of finding out your child has special needs. Isaac's here and he and Eli are gonna be best of friends. And while it's not always easy, it's real and it's our life. I think it's what God wanted it to be.